Hello, Pastor John Kress here at First Baptist of Horton, Kansas. We are meeting once again to just learn from God and His Word. Presently, we are in the letter of James, chapter 3, and we're beginning with verse 13. Join me, if you will. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. James started this chapter, chapter 3, talking about the duties of those who desire to teach. And after he makes his statement, at the beginning of the chapter, he talks about the tongue. This whole chapter could be devoted to anyone. Teacher, student, man on the street. Anyone, we need to watch our tongue. But James says, let's take this further. Especially for you teachers, because knowledge is wonderful and expounding upon it. But he says there's something that needs to go with it. It's not only the tongue that you must watch, but also the way you live. He tells us here in verse 13, if you believe that you are wise and full of understanding, then show it, display it. Don't just spout out, oh, well, I can speak Socrates and Plato. I know all of the chemical equations. Whatever subject you're studying, don't just spout it out, live it. Live the life, especially if you are a spiritual teacher. Don't just say, I could tell you every single king of both Israel and Judah and when they reign. But don't let the gospel affect you. It's nice to know how many animals went into the ark. It's nice to know how many disciples there were and what they did. But it's more importantly to know the Christ and how he is impacting your life. And therefore, if you are truly being a good teacher, truly being a disciple of the Lord, whether a teacher or a student, there should be no need for jealousy. We see that in a lot of positions. People are trying to be, the, whether as a teacher or in some other profession, be the best in their field. And so they will belittle other ones, always trying to outdo, put down one another. And even to their students, you'll never be as good as me. What a sad statement for humanity. We have become arrogant and we lie against the truth, especially if it's within the church. We are saying we are loving, but if we are just so full of ourselves, so puffed up, that we look down on all those who are not as knowledgeable as us, we know nothing. We only know information. We don't know the Christ. We don't know Jesus. We need to know him. And then allow his love to inflate us. But not be self-pumped up on ourselves. Because if we stay self-pumped up, James tells us that all that is, is just to satisfy the flesh. It allows the devil in his demonic followers into our lives love is no longer there pride is it's no longer looking out for your fellow man but it is now looking out for oneself and how are we to be known as Christians by our love 
Not by our self-importance, but by our love. Lifting one another up. If we start recognizing in ourselves that we are more interested in our own position, are we truly in a place where we should be teaching? Because if we continue along this path, there will be confusion, there will be disorder, and every evil thing. How? How can we, there be every evil thing in disorder? Well, if you're pumping yourself up saying you're the best at making disciples, you're the best at evangelism, you're the best at teaching a Sunday school lesson, with all that competition, there is no harmony, there is no love, there is no building up. We have warfare within the, within the body of Christ. That should never take place. We need to build one another up. We need to know when to apply the truth. It should be applied in everything, but how? And that's why he continues, James does. He says, but the wisdom that is from above, from God, not just our man-made knowledge, but God's wisdom is first pure and peaceable. It is one which seeks God out. It's not in, has not been intruded upon by our own thinking and our own way of trying to manipulate the truth. It is purely God's. It is also peaceable. Because God is love. God is peace. So all knowledge which comes from him should be about of bringing harmony, bringing people together, bringing people closer to him. If it's bringing discord, it is not from God. It is also gentle. The gentle in, this, in the Greek has the concept of saying, yes, here is what the law, the strict law. If I come down, I'll be coming down harsh. But our God is a God of gentleness because he knows as humans, we deserve the letter of the law and the punishment that goes with it. But he is gentle in how he applies it. We need to follow that example in our knowledge of what God has told us about his holiness and how to live it out and applying and helping others in their faith. Don't just lay down a strict rules and say, follow it. Get in line. If not, you'll hear about it. No. Be gentle. Be gentle in your partation of knowledge, of building one another. Be reasonable and full of mercy and the good fruit. But don't be so wavering either that you allow anything in. Avoid hypocrisy. Let your life and the words which you teach come out as the same. In doing so, we bring peace into this world. Not our own peace, and we're not the makers of it. We cannot manufacture it, but only Christ is, and we are just merely the vessels. But let us be good vessels, good teachers, good examples. By not only imparting truth, but living it out and helping others along the way. Let us have our lives match the knowledge that we have and truly have wisdom. That's what it boils down to. Knowledge is facts and figures. Wisdom is using that facts and figures and having a great life with them. Having a life that is pleasing to God. Building one another up. That is wisdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time that we can just gather together and just study from James. We've just even hit the tip of the iceberg here about this. The idea that our actions should follow what we know. How many times we have acquired so much knowledge through Sunday school and Bible studies and personal devotions that we know a lot about the Bible, but do we really know you? If we know you, let us live accordingly and have true wisdom and then share that with others, showing the same type of characteristics that you have applied to us. Peace, purity, righteousness, unfaithful, not being faithful, unwavering, 
Dear Lord, we want to be like you. Show us how. Show us how to go from wisdom, going from knowledge to wisdom. And all this we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and hopefully we'll see you again next week. And if you're in Horton, come by. I'd love to meet you.